In this video, we're going to talk about what a projected benefit obligation is, and then we're going to talk about how you go about calculating it. So the projected benefit obligation is typically called the PBO, and it has to do with pension accounting, in particular defined benefit pension accounting. So the PBO is the present value of all the vested and non-vested retirement benefits that the employees have earned based on the employee's future salaries. Okay, so I'm going to just break this down. Present value basically means we use time value of money to do some discounting. Vested and non-vested means that some of the benefits might not have been earned yet by the employees. Like, for example, it might say, okay, this employee has to work this amount of years in order to get this benefit. They might not have done that, but the actuary, the actuary makes assumptions right about employee turnover all kinds of things right they even make assumptions about future salaries right and so they make these assumptions they build it in that's why we hire actuaries to do this work and we ultimately come up with this projected benefit obligation the present value of the retirement benefits that this firm is ultimately going to have to pay so how will we calculate the pbo well let's say that we know the beginning balance of the pbo here are the things that are going to affect the PBO so that we get the ending balance of the PBO okay so we're gonna have service cost right that's basically the benefits that have been earned by employees during that particular year and then we're gonna have interest cost on the PBO right and the firm is gonna have an interest rate they might use let's say four percent or something like that because remember if we're using the time value of money there's some discounting here and that's where this interest cost comes into play and then also plan amendments, right? So sometimes a firm will grant prior service costs to employees. They say, hey, you did a wonderful job. I'm going to give you an extra couple of years of, of in, in terms of credit. Instead of saying, oh, you've worked here seven years, we'll treat it for pension purposes as if you worked here 10 years. Or they might actually reduce. They might amend the plan to reduce the amount of benefits that they're giving. Uh, so also there could be any kind of actuarial mistakes, right? Where the actuary says, oh, I thought employees were going to uh, work this long, but there was actually different turnover. So there might be a gain or a loss based on some incorrect assumptions by the actuaries. And so that can increase or decrease the PBO just as plan amendments can increase or decrease the PBO. Any benefits paid out to the retirees are going to decrease the PBO, right? So basically, if you think about it as this, if the PBO is your obligation to, you, uh, to pay retirement benefits to employees, then when you pay benefits out, you're reducing your obligation. So naturally, it's going to decrease the PBO, and that's going to give us our ending balance of the PBO. So let's just let's put some numbers to this. Let's make it a little more real and show how we calculate. So let's say you look at a firm and you say, okay, the beginning balance of the PBO is a hundred thousand dollars so then you say okay well what is the service cost well the th service cost turns out to be let's say it's seventeen thousand dollars seventeen thousand in service cost and then the interest cost the interest cost is going to be calculated based on the beginning balance of the pbo so let's say it was something like three and a half percent let's just say it ends up with an interest cost of thirty five hundred dollars and plan amendments there doesn't have to be any right this could be zero but let's say that during that year you granted um, this firm granted prior service cost an additional uh, that's worth an additional five thousand dollars to its employees right so it's basically increasing its obligation it's giving them extra retirement benefits and so forth now bear in mind this 5000 in prior service cost is not the amortization of prior service cost. That's something different. That's related to prior service cost. We're going to we're going to amortize the prior service cost and that's going to affect pension expense, but in terms of the PBO, what we want is the amount of prior service cost, the ultimate benefit granted. That's 5000. Later we will amortize that and that is something different. So this is not the same thing as the amortization. It's not the same number, okay? And then we're going to have actuarial gain or loss. Let's say that we had a loss of $100. Oh, let's see. $100, and that's, that's a loss. Because it's a loss, it's going to increase. It's going to increase our obligation, right? So we're going to be adding that. Um, so if it was a gain, it would do the opposite, right? It would actually decrease our obligation. And again, now, this is the actuarial gain or loss. It's not 
the amortization of any gain or loss. Okay, those those numbers are different. They're they're related, right? The actual gain or loss, we might have to amortize some of that, but that's not what's here. Right here is just the raw gain or loss from actuarial uh, mistakes and assumptions. Now, benefits paid to retirees. Well, if you don't have anybody retired yet, you won't have any benefits being paid out here. But let's say that the firm has paid out, they've got somebody who's retired and they've paid them $20,000. Now, what we need to do is just, we've got all the numbers for our formula here, so now we just have to do some addition and subtraction. So, take 100,000 plus 17,000 plus 3,500 plus 5,000 plus 100 because it's a loss, and then minus $20,000. That gives us an ending balance of the PBO of $105,600.